Welcome to Urban Knife Guy, where we discuss the urban lifestyle and jungle survival. Today, we're going to talk about which is the best type of Malaysian parang for hiking and bushcraft. And that is what is under this black cloth. If you missed it, do check out my videos on the introduction to modern Malaysian parangs first. You can watch it by clicking the card above or the link in the description below. I will not be repeating the information from that video and will not be showcasing all the different types of Malaysian parangs or talking about the history and designs. All that is covered in my previous videos. But right now, we're going to jump straight into what I think is the best type of Malaysian parang for hiking, camping and bushcraft. There are different types of parangs such as the Golok, Dugu Chandong, Parang Lading, Parang Atap and Parang Rintis. Each type of parang has its own design and purpose. But the type of parang that I think is best suited for the modern hiker and bushcrafter is... The Duko Chandong, also called the Parang Chandong or just Chandong. Its distinct characteristics are the sheep foot blade shape and the upswept curved spine and blade. The Duku Chandong best suits the needs of the modern hiker, camper or bushcrafter who wants an all-purpose knife that can do like clearing of trails, process firewood and for general cutting purposes. This parang can do everything a camp axe or a hatchet can do plus more. In fact, the parang has replaced my hatchet. If it carries any weight, this is also the parang that Ray Mears, the British survival expert, featured in his television shows. And that is why it's called the Ray Mears parang in the West. Here's some footage of different Duku Chandongs in the field. Another type of parang that might appeal to some hikers or bushcrafters is the golok. And this is more suited if you want to hunt and want to process game. The sharp tip allows you to skin, cut and slice as well as chop if you get a golok with a wide and thick blade. So the golok may be closer to a large bowie knife in this respect. If I were to process food, I would not use my parang as is meant for harder and dirtier tasks. I would use my secondary knife or a dedicated knife for food processing, mainly for hygiene reasons as well. I personally prefer the sheep's foot style blade of a chandong as it is safer. I don't want to run the risk of puncturing tarps or stabbing people if using it in a campsite. The chandong is also easier to sharpen. The parang is a tool and if used extensively in the field, it will require sharpening and stropping. Most Golocks have a recurve in the blade, making it difficult to sharpen if you're not experienced in knife sharpening and it will be even more difficult in the field. The blade shape and handle for Duku Chandongs may vary from maker to maker. This Duku Chandong is from my parang made in Bidor, Perak. It follows the traditional design of a Duku Chandong, including the handle. A similar model is made by a brand called Parang Lipis. Here we also have a Chandong, but the curve is less pronounced. This is made by Parang Tantari, and this is their 2022 model. The main differences are the shape of the blade, the presence of a finger choil, and the head of the handle and collar, which are both rectangular. The handle is also more modern in design, kind of a, a modern ergo design handle. 
Parang Tantari does make a classic version without the finger troy and a round neck and collar as well as a traditional handle like this. Most production parangs are stick tang or rat tail. That means it is not a full tang. The blade has a tail that tapers down into the handle and runs about 2.5 inches to 3 inches into the handle. I discuss the purpose and details of the stick tang in my video on the modern Malaysian parang, so I will not repeat it here. It is important to get a higher end, better made parang to ensure that the stick tang is less likely to fail. If it makes you feel more comfortable, you can get a full tang parang such as this full tang chandong by FF Blades. So this is also a version of a duku chandong. Now, obviously, this is a safer, more secure parang because it's full tang. The blade runs down the entire length of the handle and the handle scales are basically bolted to the blade. But there are some minor disadvantages to a full tang parang and that is the additional weight and the vibrations and shock that can be transferred from the handle to your hand if you use it extensively. This can cause your hand and arm to fatigue faster. The blade steel of most production parangs is high carbon steel. You can get artisan knife makers to custom make a parang out of a higher end steel such as D2 or a stainless steel. The problem with the harder steels is that it will be much harder to sharpen in the field. While higher end steels have better wear resistance and edge retention, the parang is a tool and if it's used as it's meant to, then it will dull over time, regardless of the steel and you will need to field sharpen it. It is much easier to sharpen a carbon steel than a high end stainless steel including D2 which is a semi stainless steel. If you really want to go with a stainless steel, I would recommend a 440C with good heat treatment or a 154CM, VG10 or N690 which are all easier to sharpen. But do note that stainless steel is not as tough as high carbon steel and generally you need a parang to be tough. Of course, the other factor that comes into play when choosing a higher end steel is the price. Most production parangs are quite affordable, but once you get into the high end steels, the price will be three to six times more. Regardless of the blade steel, you want a higher end parang from a reputable maker who does good heat treatment for the blade. The heat treatment should have differential hardening, which means that different parts of the blade have different hardness. You want the spine hard for strength, but the blade and handle less hard but tougher, so it does not chip or break. In terms of blade thickness, for hikers, campers and bushcrafters, the ideal thickness is between 4 to 5 mm. This is to keep the weight manageable and a blade of this thickness will allow you to perform all the tasks that you need. All these blades here are between 4.5 mm to 5 mm, except the My Parang one, which is 6 mm, but it does make for a more effective chopper. However, it is also heavier than these parangs. The grind for most production parangs is a convex grind like an axe. So it's thick at the stock and convexes down to the sharp blade and this makes the parang an effective chopper. So the convex grind can be found on my parang, parang lipis and parang tantari. However, some modern parang makers use a saber grind which has a primary grind and then a secondary grind at the edge. It's similar to a scandi grind but with a secondary bevel. This Fu Tang Chandong has a saber grind. The convex grind is probably more common as it allows for chopping and has a less likelihood of chipping the blade and the blade is less likely to stick in green wood. However, a saber grind is also very effective and is easier to maintain in the field. So I'd say if you get a parang, go with either a convex grind or a saber grind. They'll both work. What you do not want is a hollow grind or a full flat grind. Just as important as the type of parang is the blade length. Traditionally, parangs are between 12 inches to 16 inches and can go up to 20 inches. However, for hikers, campers and bushcrafters, I think this is too long. If you do not intend to clear very thick undergrowth or brush, you do not need such a long blade. Longer blades require more skill and care to use and they're also harder to maintain. A lightweight tool is best suited for the hiker, camper or bushcrafter. You want to keep your weight as low as possible because you have to travel with the parang. If I'm hiking 10 kilometers, 
I want as little weight on me as possible. As such, I recommend an 8 inch or 10 inch parang. All the parangs here are 8 inches, but some parangs are better weighted at 10 inches like the parang tantari because at 8 inches it is quite lightweight. The weight of these parangs are between 330 grams to 410 grams, which are all quite lightweight. 10 inch parangs weigh around 500 grams and 12 inch parangs weigh around 600 grams. As a general rule for hiking and bushcraft, if you have small to medium hands and are of average build, I would recommend an 8 inch blade. If you are tall and a bigger build, you can go with a 10 inch blade. At these lengths, you have all you need for all hiking and most bushcraft tasks. Having this size parang is like having a powerful all-purpose survival knife by your side. I should mention that a parang should be part of a two or three knife system. That means the parang is your main blade, which is the biggest and thickest knife that you carry. Then you should carry a secondary fixed blade or folder with a thinner blade for finer work. Something with a 2.5mm to 3.5mm thick blade will work well. I use the Mora Knife Companion in stainless steel when I carry a parang. So this is my secondary fixed blade. It is inexpensive but it is a proven workhorse for hikers and bushcrafters. You can also carry a good folder like a spider coal, a buck, or a trusty Swiss Army knife. With this two or three knife system, you'll be able to handle virtually any task in the jungle except maybe kill a bear. One more thing to add is that there are different tools for different jobs. For a parang can chop, if I really needed to chop a relatively thick log, I would use my silky saw instead. It is faster and more importantly, I conserve energy and will consume less water. So. While the parang can chop, I will not use it to chop thick wood unless I really needed it because I lost or broke my saw. So in summary, the best type of Malaysian parang for hiking and bushcraft is a Duko Chandong that has an 8 inch or 10 inch blade that is 4.5mm to 5mm thick. Buy one from a reputable parang maker so you get good heat treatment and construction if it is a stick tang. Go with high carbon steel for toughness ease of field sharpening and affordability. If you really want stainless steel, consider 440C, 154CM, VG10 or N690. I hope you enjoyed this video on the best type of Malaysian parang for hiking and bushcraft. I will be reviewing each of these parangs shown in the video over the next few days and weeks, so be sure to subscribe to the channel and check back. I also have some breaking news. I understand that a new parang is being developed for the modern outdoor men in Malaysia. So check back with this channel on information on this very special parang. I'll also update the description of this video on this parang once the information is out. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you like the content in general, please subscribe to the channel and hit that notification bell. Thanks for watching. Talk to you soon.